Hey everybody, um, we're still working on the wiki up and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how to build a door for it and we're going to build a uh, A-frame style door that's going to custom match uh, the opening so that we can just set it in front and it's going to be pretty heavy duty and it's going to be locked together with um, you know by wedging out or uh, taking some um, chunks out of this and, and splicing the wood together or splicing is probably not the right word but y'all get, get my drift. So the first thing you're gonna do, and you're really not gonna understand what I'm trying to do until you've seen kind of the completed project. But um, you know, here in the south, we don't have anything like birch bark. Um, you know, these shelters would be so much easier if I was up north, and this is typically a northern style shelter. But uh, if you've got birch bark, you can use that for your shingling, and you can use the birch bark for your door. But since all we have down here is, is cedar, Really, for, for this type of stuff, or, or grass, we're going to show you how to do it, uh, this method. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically take out these sections so that I can fit the top part of the A-frame together. And once I get this a little bit closer to where um, we're to the next step, I'll come back. So the next step is, once you get your, basically, your vertical side pieces here, um, you're, you're custom measuring those to the size of your doorway. You've got the, the two notches taken out, and then you're just going to take a, a stick, and this one's notched too, and you're going to find your, your cross piece. And you want this to the inside. You want this top piece to the inside, so um, gauge it all together. Everything that we do out here, you know, we customize, even if we're building a debris bed or something along those lines. You're going to customize that to your size and width, and it's no different than a doorway. So once you get this, then you're going to, you know, mark these, and I've already got them marked. Just take your saw and make uh, notches on both sides. And then once you do that, then you're just going to make notches on this, pop them out, and then we're going to tie them together with a little bit of paracord. After you get your top pieces assembled and notched, and I haven't even tied these yet, this is just all free floating. Um, and if you don't have paracord, especially up north, something that works really well is spruce roots or any type of pine roots. They're actually fantastic for lashing. So if you don't have any rope with you, just uh, improvise with some roots or some uh, whip up some local cordage. So all I'm doing right now is I'm taking this other bar, and it's about a foot up off the ground because since we created a keyhole fireplace, which means we're not going to chop our wood, our wood is literally going to run right out the front door. And I just take my saw, you know, just make a couple of little marks, something that I can see, and do it on both sides. And once I've done that, then I can just kind of pull this apart and bust out the notches. So the next step in this frame, I'm going to show you basically how to lash the frame together. It's just a simple lashing. There's nothing technical about it. Just take about a three to four foot piece of rope, and you don't even need that much. You can take a, probably get away with a six inch uh, piece of rope if you want to, if you're really conserving your paracord. But you're going to fold it in half, you know, kind of find the middle point, and then lash it above and behind. You're going to make an X pattern in the front, and it doesn't really matter how you go from here. Just try to make it look symmetrical. I'll come from behind, crank it down, come up around the sides, over the top a couple of times, and then just clean it, finish it up with um, just an overhand knot or whatever kind of finishing knot that you want to use and that's your finished product. Okay, so the next step is is I have lashed another middle piece right here and uh, essentially what that is for is so that I can weave branches back and forth in between it and I had planned to weave vines all the way through but I, honestly I just really didn't like how it looked and some of the vines weren't that flexible uh, that we've got this time of year. Uh, it's normally a great method but I'm a little bit OCD about my shelters, you know. I, I, I was in the construction business for years and did blowed out kitchens and blown out houses and, you know, did everything to the max. And I, I kind of like to do the same thing in the woods, so I like my shelters to look squared away. So, um, anyway, so I'm going to take a flexible sapling. Uh, this is all cedar. Everything that we're doing pretty much is, is cedar. And I'm going to clean it up, knock off the funky stuff off of it. 
and then I'm just going to take it and basically feed this in and I'm going to make an entire little frame of these and then once you get them in and you'll do it one way you know and then you'll do it the other way <coughs> like I've got this over the top this next time I'll come in from the bottom and do it like this and just kind of alternate these back and forth. All right, forth. so I've got the door weaved. I had planned to do something a little bit different, but you know, in survival, guys, there, there is no such thing as a plan. You have an availability of resources, and you know, you may think that one thing's going to work, and you have to improvise and overcome. So, I, this actually kind of worked out better. This is another technique I know for uh, making doors. And instead of making a sandwiched frame uh, style door that I was going to do before with vines and then another secondary frame that uh, set over the top of this, I've decided to basically just weave these in and now I'm going to take the boughs and weave those in. And something that's really important about wiki-ups is that uh, they have to ventilate. Otherwise you'll get, you know, really choked out. So having a, you know, <coughs> really... I guess well insulated door can sometimes be uh, somewhat of a disadvantage depending on how the ventilation in your structure is because you don't want to be sm you know choking on smoke all night long. That's another reason we leave a big gap underneath the door. You want air to rush in and then push the, the smoke up out of the top of, of your, your wiki up. So uh, the next step is I'm just going to take this and basically just weave this stuff in and that's how the whole shelter is done there's really no rope uh, I mean other than the door frame and this can be done with uh, primitive methods but this is part of our, our permanent camp structure so we like to build it heavy duty so that when our students sleep in it there's you know no chance that they're going to accidentally disassemble something because you know totally primitive is never going to be as good as having some modern tools with you. So just going to take that and start weaving it in and keep doing that and basically until the whole door looks just like the rest of the structure. What I'm doing right now is just finishing up the last part and it's it's just super simple guys. I mean there's really no science to this. Just you know you're using fairly flexible uh, saplings and, and, and branches you now everything needs to really be green in order to be able to work with it. If you've got uh, issues bending your materials, um, you can pretty much heat bend anything. So anything that's giving you a little bit of trouble, just take it over the fire and the portion that you want bent, heat up, and then just bend it either with your, your body or uh, just whatever you have around. And just take this stuff and fold it in wherever it'll fit. You know, clean up the edges where need be or tuck them back in. And a few more bows and this thing will be ready. Alright guys, so the wiki up is, is pretty much done. Our, our uh, crib is pimped. About as good as it's going to get. There are a few other things that I might add to this later. Uh, but all in all, this is about as comfy, comfy as it gets for wilderness living. You won't really get a better shelter that has a work area, nice fireplace, um, is nice to sleep in with no sleeping bag even in the coldest of temperatures, has a smoke rack above us, we've got a chair, we've got a mortar and pestle, got a nice dry place for our firewood, and then we've got a nice suspended bed out of debris and cedar bough right here. So uh, as far as primitive living, I'm going to be doing a fair amount of this, uh, or a fair amount of it in, in short order. Um, our uh, One of my apprentices is actually going to stay in this the next couple of nights. He's going to get to do the first test run. So uh, we'll probably do a little bit of video of that and post it up after this just to kind of give you, um, you know, a bird's eye view of, of actually doing the real thing out here. And this is just some of the stuff that we teach and our advanced wilderness survival training. These aren't short-term skills, these are long-term skills, so don't get the two confused. You're not gonna whip one of these together in an afternoon. Um, so, 
If you have an interest in learning any of these skills, we have um, an instructor certification program now. Um, we have all different kinds of ways that you can get certified through Sigma 3. So if you've got an interest in, in taking your self-reliance skills to a whole nother level and uh, for, have a modern perspective as well as a primitive perspective on survival, you know, we probably have, in my opinion and many others, probably one of the best overall survival ideologies out there. We try to take the, the primitive and modern and, and pick the best methods for both. So, um, you know, please share, like, and subscribe our videos and uh, help us spread this information to everybody. Thank you for all that you do for us. Uh, Sigma 3 out.